It's so great to see you here, especially if you're a visitor. So a special welcome to friends and family as we come to celebrate um, the baptism of a few individuals who want to declare publicly their intention to follow Jesus, to submit their lives to God through the act of baptism. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what that means because it's a very strange thing. Probably most of you seeing a tank up there full of water, you might be used to a little bowl and a sprinkle, but we like to dunk them. <clears throat> so what is baptism? What is baptism? And do we really need to be baptized to be a Christian? Now people often have this conception because you're born in a Christian country, you are a Christian. Uh, this country has been known as a Christian country, I think less and less so now, sadly. But the, the fact is that being born in an English country doesn't make you a Christian. And there's the old adage, isn't it? Going to McDonald's doesn't make me a beef burger. That's, that's a reality. And so even being sprinkled as a baby, being christened as a baby, doesn't make you a Christian. It's like a bringing to God of that child um, to say, you know, we want this child to grow in the faith of what it is to be a Christian, but they have to own that. And that's really poor and re really important. Um, so faith is really required to be a Christian, but not just any old faith, not just faith or belief in something, any old thing, but it is in faith it is faith in the one true God. And so it's not something that we make up or we adjust to what we fancy. It's what the Bible teaches us and we understand as Christians, this is God's word, God speaking to us and he reveals who he is as God. And so we don't make up God in our minds, but we come to the Bible and we see God is this incredible mystery of spirit who, who actually comes into our world as Jesus Christ, who is eternal, who has no beginning, no end. It's hard for us to get our minds around that. He is three in one, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. How do we understand that? And that's the journey of faith, is growing in the understanding of that. Another thing about being a Christian is to be a Christian isn't just about being a believer. But actually, the New Testament, the second half of the Bible, which taught about Jesus, showed that being a Christian was about being a follower. So it wasn't about an event of becoming a Christian, but it was about a journey of 24-7 being a follower. And Jesus himself said, I'm the way, I'm the truth. I'm the life, no one can get to God except through me. Now we might not like that, we might want to create our own ways to God, but Jesus himself said it's through him <clears throat> that we can know what it is to have a real relationship with God. Excuse me a minute. <coughs> got a frog in my throat, which I hope doesn't come out of the baptistry. Um, Followers of Christ, followers of Jesus, or Christians, therefore acknowledge that Jesus is God. That God came as a human being among us. We just had Christmas not many months ago. That he, he was real, he had a real birth, he, he really lived among us. He was put to death on a cross for our sin and was buried and rose again from the dead. We just had that at Easter, that's the meaning of Easter, not bunnies and chocolate. And that he's alive right now and that one day he's going to come back to this earth to kind of wrap things up and do away with death and injustice and pain and sorrow and tears and all those things. But his purpose for coming to earth was to restore the broken relationship that humanity had with God. And God invites us not to take up religion, but to have a real dynamic relationship with him. And when we take him up on that opportunity, that wonderful opportunity to know him, what we do then is we turn away from living our way to living his way. Instead of going our way in our direction, we go in his direction. And that's what you might have heard of a word called repentance or repent. It literally means 
turning 180 degrees and going in the opposite direction, changing your way of thinking. And as we do this, we can encounter God. And, and as we do this, something incredible happens. It, it's a spiritual thing, but the Bible says we become alive to God. It's like we are born again. You might have heard that phrase, born again Christian. There's only one kind of Christian. It's a born again Christian, someone who comes alive to God. Our old life has gone, our new has come, and we choose to walk in this journey of following Jesus. Um, when you have a wedding service, there are promises that are made. The wedding day is just the event. The, the marriage is the journey. The same even with baptism. There is going to be some things said, but it's not just the day. It's the journey that happens after this that's important. You don't have days off from being married. You don't have days off from, uh, some might like it, I don't know. But you don't. And you don't have days off from being a Christian. So basically, baptism is an outward act, an outward sign of all that, of what's going, in, going on inside someone in their faith in God. Baptism is kind of like a signpost pointing to a change of heart, a change of desire, change of mind to truly follow Jesus. And when it's accompanied with faith, our relationship with God just gets better and better and deeper and deeper. So why be baptized? <coughs> well, first of all, Jesus was baptized. It's one of the things he told us to do, was to be baptized. Baptism is a strange thing, and the reason we do it like this is because the actual word baptized means to submerge or to immerse. It was used of dying fabric. So you can tell if, if, a, if a nice white piece of fabric goes in the dye and comes out, hopefully it's all covered in the new color. And that's what's happening in our lives, that we come out representing God in our lives. It really pleases God. When Jesus was baptized, God said that he was so pleased with what Jesus had done. But in the Bible, there's a, there's a few pictures that help us understand what happens. I'm just gonna point to some. We just mentioned Jesus' death, burial and resurrection. And so when they are baptized, they were lowered into the water. It's like they've died and it's like they're being buried. And then they come up into resurrection life, into a new life following God. It's a very simple picture and it's linked in with the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. Another picture is that we're being cleaned up from sin. Now sin is a funny concept. A lot of people don't think of sin. What is sin? Anyone here like to play darts? One. Well, this is a great analogy. Anyone like to fire a bow and arrow? Anyone like to fire a gun? Goodness me, you're not a very target-oriented group, are you? Well, the whole thing of sin is this. The word sin means to miss the mark. So if you're going for the bullseye, the center of the target, and you miss that target and say the, the middle is 50. And to win, you've got to get 50. But all you do is you hit 38 or 49. Then you didn't win, did you? You didn't meet the standard. Now, if you got 49, I got 38, you might think you're better at darts and, and shooting and everything than I am but we're both failed. In the eyes of God, we've not met the standard. We might want to make our own standard, but that's not God's standard. And so sin is basically doing whatever doesn't meet God's standard. Not with God like, you know, with a big stick hitting down, but just saying, no, there's a better way of doing things. And we know in our lives, how many of us said we're going to do something, we haven't done it. But we believe people should do it. We've not met that standard, have we? How many people say we should pay our bills on time but don't do it? We don't meet the standard, do you see? So we fail in so many things. And so we can set a standard we think is right, but actually God's standard we'll never achieve. But what Jesus does is he comes and he says, I'm gonna take your sin, your wrongness on me. And so really, 
what baptism is a bit like having a wash of all that wrong stuff and being having it washed off you inside and you come up clean you know God's peace you know God's goodness you know God's forgiveness as we say Lord will you forgive me it's another picture of deliverance of being set free um, some three and a half thousand years ago you might know the story of Moses who led the people of Israel out of Egypt and slavery and how Moses opened up the Red Sea God opened up the Red Sea and Moses took this nation from slavery and oppression and they came to the Red Sea and the, and, and the Egyptians were coming after them and they didn't know what to do but they had to focus on God and God opened a way impossibly through the Red Sea and they went through the Red Sea and the army chased them and the sea covered them and drowned their enemies. Those enemies could no longer chase them. They were free. But it wasn't enough just to camp on the other side of the river, even though they were free. They needed to go to the new land, the place that God had promised them. And so baptism is the beginning of a journey into a new life, of knowing freedom, that we can be freed from <coughs> addictions and from habits and patterns of life that are self-destructive or hurtful to other people and we can know freedom in that and and the final thing it, it points to being adopted into God's family that we can know God not just as some distant God but as father I know people have bad concepts of father but God as the good father the perfect God father is the model that all fathers should aspire to, that all mothers could aspire to, that in his love and care for us, he does great things, he protects us, he looks out for us. And then really, the final thing we do is we are saying, God, you're in charge of my life. Who likes other people telling what to do? Anyone love, anyone love other people telling them what to do? No, no hands. We don't like being told what to do. And that's a challenge because if we're going to be a follower of Jesus, we've got to say, God, it's not what I want to do, it's what you want me to do. And whatever God wants us to do is going to be good. He has good things for us, a good journey for us. And so as we baptize people, we're putting God first and everything else second. God first, above our marriage, above our children, above our work, above our finances, everything. And then we say, God, how can I be a better husband, a better father, a better friend, a better worker, better with my money to help people? How can I be better? Not in my own standard and strength where I fail, but in your standard and strength. How can I please you? How can I live my life in a way that when I have trouble, I go to you and not myself? And so that really is what we're doing today. We're, we're recognizing God is doing something inside some people, but they publicly want to say outside to everyone else, God's doing something in me. And this is the journey I want to go on. So I'm going